Hey, what's up, Rare Moment fam? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm AG. This is Cole. We are the Rare Moment. We're excited today. Today, we're going to be talking about how to be smart on Top Shot. I know a lot of you who are just getting into it uh, don't want to go in blind and are looking for advice, and that's smart of you, and you found the right channel for it. No, we, you know, we haven't been in Top Shot forever. We got, uh, Cole got in a little earlier than me. I got into it about a month and a half after him, but we've been in it for a few months now. So we've been doing our own analysis, our own research, figuring out how to turn an ROI on this site while at the same time becoming true collectors because we think that this site's going to be around for a while. So um, I'm just going to get into it real quick here. The first thing I just wanted to share with you as far as my strategy goes, <clears throat> I like to use third parties a lot because I like to uh, look at data to make smart decisions. So let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to see right here is a Michael Porter Jr. moment. Um, I've been having my eye on this moment for a few weeks now. This just jumped about seven bucks in the last two days. So what I look for here when I come in and look at moments before I buy any moment, I'm going to come to evaluate market and I'm going to take a look and see what the stats are. As you can see, there's 751 remaining um, we just noticed evaluate market just took down whether or not it is minted or not. So we don't know how many of those 751s are left in packs or what, or how many have yet to be released. Yeah, yeah. We don't know if that is a permanent change or if that's just a temporary, you know, change for now while they're fixing it. We don't know that we're not quite sure, but either way, I'm going to go down here and, uh, kind of take a look at the, uh, the pink that stands for the upper cereals and the yellow is more of the lower cereals. So I'm always going to kind of scan this down here and take a look and see realistically when this market is at a higher, what, you know, higher market, what can I get for him? You know, you can, you can come in and get all boned up and look at these uh, February prices, but I don't know how realistic that is. You know, I would like to believe that the market's going to see another bump you know, and we're going to see a big spike in the market. I would love to see another February spike in NBA Top Shot at some point, but don't base all of your stuff. And, you know, oh, I, you know, at its peak, you know, this moment was selling for 85 bucks. Be realistic, guys. Yeah. Right. This As moment, of right now, that February spike is an outlier for sure compared absolutely. to the rest of the market. Absolutely. But still, you know, like if you were to buy this moment a week or two ago, you're already making ROI. Um, I'm going to go to another moment here. This is a Trey Young moment. Um, another question that I get from friends that are just getting into top shot is, do I go for lower cereals or do I go for, uh, just, you know, it doesn't matter just the lowest ask. Well, this is a good way to indicate, you know, what kind of moments are selling. You know, you can see if you got a moment 465, you know, 196, whatever it is, you know, you can see if, is this a good idea to to purchase one of these, depending on how often those are getting purchased. Another RJ Barrett moment. So you can see there's a lot of action on these, on these, on these moments here. Um, and these are the moments I like to target and I like to be realistic. You know, this is a $23 moment right here. Maybe at some point I can sell it for 45. Maybe at some point you can get a $20 ROI, but be realistic with yourself. Like I said, don't come back here and base it on, well, the price for a uh, high cereal was, 102 bucks. So I'm just going to hold off until it's that price again. Be realistic with yourselves. Yeah. Uh, it could be another year or two years until it sees that price for on, for a moment like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Darren Fox, obviously um, this guy's another, another name. All these guys we're talking about, you know, none of these guys are big names right now. They're, they're mid tier players, but they have opportunities to turn into stars at some point, especially mm -hmm. Darren Fox, in my personal opinion, that's the kind of stuff that I look for. You know, I, I want to look for superstars and I want to look at for potential superstars and, and I'm going to use evaluate market to determine if I'm going to just buy the lowest ask and realistically see if I can turn it for seven, 10, $20 profit, or if I should maybe pay up for a lower cereal because maybe it's easier to sell. So here's a great example that I wanted to give you. So, right. Look at that. We went through the, look at all, look at all the moments, look at all the action on these moments. Now let's go to uh, the Lori Markinen moment. Nothing against Lori Markin, Lori Markinen, right? Eleven bucks, but you can see this card hasn't been around for a long time. There's still seven thousand in circulation. It's only forty percent owned. 
And there's just not that much ac action on this guy's card. You know, I mean, sure. Could you buy his moment for 11 bucks right now? And at some point maybe sell this moment for 18 bucks. Yeah, maybe, but when, I don't yeah, know. Realistically, how much more growth does Laurie Markin and have as a player? I mean, right. Who knows? Maybe he does blossom into something, but just based off what his career has been so far. Exactly. I haven't seen enough to justify a serious investment in him. Exactly. So, so those are some examples of series two moments uh, as far as what I'm looking for, right? I like to see a lot of action on the moments. I like to see that there's a potential chance at an, a realistic ROI when I'm investing into series two moments. It's also very important to look and see, you know, how much is remaining and, and just to make sure, you know, you're not buying something that's still got 10,000 left in circulation because when those packs start dropping, those lowest ass are going to start hitting and that moment's just going to decrease. Yeah, sure. It's going to go back up, but it's usually going to go down. So now I want to turn it over to series one and show you kind of what a series one looks like. So as you can see, there's far less action on this Jason Tatum series one over the course of the last 90 days compared to a series two moment. Well, one, because it's it's more expensive talking $270. You're talking, there's only 1500 LE. So less in circulation, there's less remaining. And, you know, in our belief series one moments aren't necessarily moments you get for quick flips series one moments are for those investors and collectors who are in it for the long haul yeah. and are in it for multiple years, not a, you know, flip this in a week type of thing. Exactly. And, and the statistics show you right here, right? Yeah, sure. You can buy and sell, but look how much often people are purchasing low cereals. See, there's re really no yellow dots here that indicate low cereals get bought. So if you're going to, you know, just for this moment in particular, if you're going to buy a low cereal Jason Tatum moment with the expectation that you're going to turn this around in another week and make a few hundred bucks, you're dreaming here. And you need to utilize this data to be realistic with yourselves. Mm -hmm. Um I just wanted to show you just one more series one, uh, James Harden, because it varies player to player, right? Is James Harden more of a popular player than Jason Tatum? Well, according to this moment, uh, uh, you know, compared to this moment, yeah, looks like this series one is a little bit more popular for potential flipping because there's more action on this moment. Now that is due to the fact that there's a little bit more circulation. You have 2000 more moments in this, in this set, but Looks like there's more action. So you, if you are looking to possibly flip series ones, yes, there are options out there for you. This is why you need to utilize this kind of data to make sure whatever you're purchasing a moment for, you're purchasing it for the right move. And that's how you're going to make good decisions here. Mm -hmm. The last thing I wanted to go over, I showed you series two. I showed you a few series one. Now let's go over the, the rare metallic gold. Uh, poor Joel Embiid. I like Joel Embiid. I think he's a great player. Uh, but look at this moment. It's just, it doesn't get a lot of action. Now there's only 151 or 150 moments in the circulation. So you would assume there's not going to be a lot of action on this moment. I mean, you're talking maybe 10, there's, you know, in the last two months, there's only been 10 transactions on this moment so if you were buying a joel and bead moment as in this like like this one to flip well sorry bud you you're not gonna you're not gonna exceed your expectations now with a player like steph curry who has more of a circulation count of a rare moment like 499 and his name's steph curry way more popular than joel and bead way more liked in the lead than joel and bead and if you're an NBA player, you know these things, or an NBA uh, fan, you know these things. And now you can kind of see, well, if I want to buy this moment here and flip it, I might have a better chance of doing so because there's a little more action on it. So those are just, those are just, you know, some of the small analytics that I look at when it comes to buying moments because I don't like buying from, from the blind. And I did that once or twice. And I think we all have done that once or twice. We've learned our lesson. But if you want to actually take this and turn it into a positive, you know, income, whether that's a few hundred bucks or a few thousand dollars, you can, you just need to be smart. And that's just, I have a very analytical mind. That's the way I think about it. And I know that Cole uh, thinks about it a little differently. So I'm going to let him shed his insights on uh, kind of his strategy.
Yeah, just kind of piggybacking off the analytical strategy. Strategy, You know, I did mention in one of our previous videos of the type of guys that I am collecting. So, you know, I'm looking at all the Series 1 guys that are going to be for sure Hall of Famers, you know. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, even though that's a Series 2. Uh, who else? Uh, Carmelo, Harden, you know, guys like that, that I know for sure are going to be, you know, they're going to hold their value two, three, four, five years down the line. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, I know the rare and legendary moments of these guys is, you know, most likely going to hold the most value, you know, no matter what the series is, especially series one. But I firmly believe even if you just have common moments, series one of these type of guys, they're going to pay big dividends for you down the line right. just because of their name value. You know, these guys are playing in prime time pretty much on a nightly basis, you know, under the bright lights, they're gonna millions be, of they're eyeballs gonna, they're on They're going to be in playoffs. Yep, they're going to be deep in the playoffs every year, you know. And the thing is, we know what their careers are. Like, they're on, you know, the back nine of their careers. If you're one of those people that their strategy is to collect all these young guys like Jaw, Zion, Lamelo, Edwards, so on and so forth, by all means, go for that. I'm not trying to deter you from that strategy. I think it's a great strategy personally. I have nothing against any young players. Just where my head is at, there's so much that can go wrong with those guys. You know, they could have a catastrophic injury, be out of the league in a year or two. They could just become a career journeyman on the bench, or they could be just playing not good at basketball and be playing overseas in two, three years, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, they're good players, you know? I mean, yeah. the, name, the names he just said are, are, are good players, and, and there's, there's not a bad strategy in investing those guys. The main point is he's just saying, be careful not to just load up, diversify the portfolio a little bit, have some old, you know, have some vets that you know are going to be for sure. And maybe take a chance on some of those rookies and some of those lottery tickets. Exactly. And I just sold a Jaron Jackson Jr. Series one moment probably two, three days ago now. And that's not to say that I don't believe in him as a player. I think he's a great young player, has a lot of potential. He's going to be playing alongside Jaw, you know, on Memphis, potentially the next 10, 15 years. Who knows? And yeah, that's not to say that I don't believe in him. It's just I want to use that money to go after the guys that I mentioned earlier. You know, I know what those guys are. They're a lot safer, in my opinion, as far as investing goes. Exactly. And then also, you know, piggy or going off of the strategy portion of this video, you know, the back half of this video, I really want to just kind of get everybody to relax, you know. The sky is not falling, no matter <laughs> how many Discord comments you read or how many Twitter comments you read. You know, this is normal. This is a marketplace. We're going to have ebbs and flows. We're obviously in a very, you know, low point as far as the market goes. Yeah. But over time, that's going to go up. You know, if yeah. you're in this for just flipping moments, flipping packs, you know, go ahead and do that. You know, I'm not going to tell you that's wrong or say that you shouldn't be in top shot for that. Everybody has their own reason for being on top shot. And at the end of the day, as much as people would like to say, oh, I'm only in this for the collecting portion of it. I'm only in it for the fun. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, at the root of everybody being here, we all want to make money. You know yep. it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Yep. And so I just really want to make clear that this is not a a sprint it's not a 40 yard dash mm -hmm. this is a marathon yep. you know if you're a long-term holder don't panic when you see your evaluate market you know uh, account valuation go down every single day and you shouldn't be looking at that every single day too it's not healthy because obviously <laughs> it's human nature to get yeah. nervous when yeah. you see your account value going down every day right it's a good so, point it's a good, good point so if you continue to see that going down you might panic, you know, make a very bad move, sell some stuff that you're going to be kicking yourself, you know, a year exactly. or two down the line going, why the hell did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Just be smart. Just trust yourself, trust your process, trust the moments that you invested in that in a couple of years from now, they will be worth, you yeah. know, potentially a few grand or however much you 
you know, want to sell it for, hopefully it gets to that point. Yeah. And just be honest with yourself. And I think yeah. that's, what's important is you got to be honest with who you are and what your objective is. If you don't have an objective, get an objective. Yeah. Cause if you don't, you're going to go nowhere on this site and you're going to be scratching your head, asking yourself why you bought a series one, sold it two weeks later for a negative ROI when you could have just held on to that for two years and been patient, you know? So you got to figure out, are you a collector or are you someone that's just interested in flipping packs in, in moments like, like Cole said, and depending on what you are, that's going to help with your strategy on how you should navigate the site. Yeah. And also another quick point I want to make too is back during the, you know, huge February spike, I had about 230 bucks invested. So not a lot of money invested at the time. And my account value was just under nine K. And so sure I could have, you know, I could have, sold everything off and withdrew that money into yep, my bank bounce. account. Thank you very much. Wipe yeah. Hands you clean. know, easy nine K basically, <laughs> but I didn't, you know, maybe in hindsight, I should have sold a couple moments, you know, made a little bit of money, put that in the bank, but you know, I held strong because I believe in this product that much yep. in the long term. Exactly. So right now I got about 2k invested into it. I know I've mentioned that in previous videos as well. And my account value is less than 4k. So mm -hmm. if you look at it that way, I look like an idiot, but <laughs> I really don't because the guys I'm going after, I'm planning on holding for, yeah. you know, two, three to yeah. five years or so. And, 10 and, like years. Cole, and like Cole said, just relax, guys. You know, if you are like us here at the rare moment, we believe that Top Shot is going to be around for years to come. We believe that this is just the start. I, ab I absolutely personally believe we're going to see series five, six, 10, 12, we're going to be around to see those top shots. Just not going to all of a sudden close up the doors. You're going to go to the website and it's going to say, thanks for the money guys. See you yeah. later. You know, yeah. like it's just the, not going to happen. That's not happening. And then I guess my final point that I want to make too is if there's any kids watching this, make sure to cover your ears real quick. I'm about to say the B word. We're still in beta guys. We are still in beta. That's right. We're about six months into this being an open beta we're mm -hmm. just in series two of God knows how many, as AG just mentioned, we'll probably see, you know, series a hundred at some point, because <laughs> we just Hopefully. don't think that this is going anywhere anytime soon. And I really don't think that it will. And so, yeah. you know, and also a few weeks ago, Top Shot or, and Dapper Labs received millions of dollars of investments from pretty powerful guys with, you know, very deep pockets. So you know, yeah, if a, guy, I, if, a guy by the name of Michael Jordan, you ever heard yeah, of him? Hmm. Yeah. If guys like Michael Jordan are investing millions of dollars into this, <laughs> I think this is going to really hold some long-term value. And so, yeah, I mean, so this take a video, step back from the ledge guys, take a yeah. step back and uh, reconsider selling some of those uh, series one moments you're holding on to. Yeah. So this video is basically just to kind of show you an analytical approach to things, kind of show you where our heads are at. And really to talk you guys off the ledge, just R-E-L-A-X, relax, relax, guys. We got a long ways to go <laughs> and hopefully a lot more fun down the line. So yeah. I'll uh, toss this over to AG. Yeah, you know, we'll, we just uh, want to... We just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we just want to put that disclaimer out there because I haven't yet. This is not financial advice. Yeah, do not this hold is, us accountable. Yeah, do not hold us accountable for your actions. Uh, but if you do and they turn out good, feel free to send us a moment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a little commission on that. Um, but yeah, man, uh, don't, you know, j just be smart out there, guys. And that's all we're just trying to get across in this video. J just be smart and and really do your research, do your homework. Don't just go out there and, and sit in a blind and, and, and shoot ducks at will. So mm -hmm. appreciate you guys tuning in here. Please uh, like this video, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter at the rare moment. We love you guys. Appreciate the fan base out here. We're going to keep doing this. Good luck collecting. We'll see you soon. Cheers.